Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mikkel Drew Pelham. I talk about digital fashion design software and communication on this channel. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. In this month's CAD chats on Instagram, I got to chat with Trudy Gardner of Wayfinder 3D Bodywear Studio. And what's really intriguing to me was the bodywear aspect because I've heard so many times that doing lingerie or swim Anything close to the body can be a bit challenging in 3D, particularly getting the technical side of it correct. Specs, production ready patterns, that kind of thing. Trudy also has a really interesting journey into fashion. So um, before I got into the fashion industry uh, in 2019, I released from the military. I was actually a RCAF pilot. I left that in 2019 and um, I was just kind of following, I was gonna be a stay at home mom. I thought that would be like what I would do in, in my retirement. I really loved doing uh, pattern making. Like it's, like it's what I really, really enjoyed about the whole, all about everything in fashion. And so, um, I learned Illustrator when I was doing my fashion diploma and really at the beginning it was just like what skills can I acquire that I both love doing and might be useful in the world. I started reaching out to pattern makers and saying like hey I have I can do illustration skills and um, is this something that you might be interested in and I, I booked quite a few gigs in the beginning. Um, you'll have seen my work with like Emerald Aaron and Ruby's Bras and like a lot of these home sewing pattern making, home sewing pattern makers. And while I was doing that work, I discovered Flow 3D. <laughs> like, is it really a pattern making software? And you can also simulate that pattern that you just made in 3D. And like, this is so mind blowing. How is this not the industry standard? I mean, there's something to be said for um, not jumping on every new shiny thing that's out there. But I think 3D modeling software has been around for long enough to prove that it is yes. valuable. So now I, so right now I work as a freelance designer and I specialize in doing intimate, intimate apparel specifically for Clothes 3 ds It comes from a place of a problem that I am well acquainted with. I loved learning how to do it for myself and being able to fit and tweak and get exactly what mm -hmm. I wanted out of a bra. It's such a functional garment and you also want it to be beautiful. And when you, when you empower yourself to be able to be like, I'm going to make what I want to make, um, it's, yeah. it's really empowering. Yeah. It is the most difficult garment to create in 3D. And so I approach it first from the pattern making perspective. You trust the real life version of it first before you trust the digital version of it. The way that we work is that we start with the design concept and then we move to a tech pack and then we, we create a pattern and that comes back to us. We mock it up in 3D and then we have a design meeting. And then that goes back, those comments go back to the factory. The factory makes us our first physical sample. That physical sample comes back to us. We decide what we need to change on the physical sample. We bring those changes into Clo. We make the changes in Clo. And so our whole team is getting a lot, a lot of experience in seeing how that physical garment is represented in the 3D space. And we're all getting a lot of experience and trust with what we see and what we believe in the 3D space because we have the physical um, counterpart to it to really understand how the information is being translated. Interesting, interesting. The fit in the 3D environment lacks a soft body, although we do have soft body now. Yeah. It's not a real soft body big marshmallow like it's not a real it doesn't have any bones it doesn't have like different densities across the body you can see where you would lose trust if you didn't know that you were grounding your work based on real physical practice yeah primary. yeah that makes so much more sense now like now okay i get it <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, so CADs are still done in Illustrator. Our concept designs still start out in Illustrator. I use Illustrator for like graphic designs. I was just using it this morning. Like I, I go between Chloe and Illustrator. I use Photoshop a lot to create laces. That's how that's how I create my digital mm -hmm, laces mm -hmm. in Chloe. Mm -hmm. I dabble in um, Blender. I did all of the the browseware um, courses. There was one more. Oh, Daz 3D. I create I create uh, a lot of my model avatars in, in Daz. Yeah. Those are the main ones. I've, and I've, I, I've been trying to figure out substance as well. Adobe Substance. I've been dabbling in that as well. But it's another hard one. There's not a lot of information. Yeah, on. yeah. I've um, thought about substance. And then I tried to go in there and I tried to look stuff up. And I was like, all right, so this is not going to be my specialty. I'll just go into the marketplace. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I don't have to know yeah. anything. Um, I love pattern making. I love the most about it, how the way that it has accelerated my um, knowledge of pattern drafting. I love the layer tool and it's not, there's two ways to layer fabric and flow. And the one that I'm, t I'm, I'm trying to refer to, it's, it's in your 2D toolbar. It's called, I think it's called like the okay. layer tool. And so you can select, so let's say you have like a bra that's crossing in the middle and you want to say you want the left bra cup to cross over the right bra cup. You use that tool and you just like identify like this piece over this piece. And it really helps with some of those collision errors that you get. I would say no, because you know what, like, like I had a general idea of, of pattern drafting, but then when I first started in Clo, I had, I was very insecure about my pattern drafting skills like, to really learn Clo or any 3D program. There's, there's a lot to it. And so I think pattern drafting is something that can come along the way. Yeah, I agree with you. It's it, to me, it's like, it's a nice to have, and it's very, very helpful, but it's not necessary. I love learning. I love it. I love like constantly learning new things. And I love that this is applicable in a way that I, I truly believe is making our world better. The fashion industry, it's so inefficient. There's so many in inefficiencies oh built into it. Yes. And I think the more that we lean into digital processes to help us with those inefficiencies like we're, we can we can cut down on so much waste yeah i agree and it's rare that we have things that are fun and useful so i'm like come on get on yeah. get, let's let's all <laughs> yeah, get, yeah. On board. Yeah, get on board <laughs> yeah i love to help and i love to you know, give advice where I can. I also have a course um, on specifically for using Clo 3D for intimate apparel. So you can check that out. The best place to find me though is wayfinder3d.com. That's my website and you can kind of get to me everywhere else from there. That was such a fun conversation and so educational. I was really curious about using 3D software with lingerie and what Trudy revealed today made it all make sense. I also love that she loves learning. Thanks for watching today's video. If you want to start using Clo 3D, click the link in the description to sign up for my course. And if you'd like to learn specifically for lingerie, check out Trudy's course on wayfinder3d.com. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video if you find it helpful. Have a fantastic week and I'll see you next time.